Good morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, longevity business, formulations, ingredients, skin health questions, something you may have heard about, read about in the paper or seen on the news, If you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. We want to be your go-to resource for all things health and nutrition. Our number, 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. Of course, if you have a success story you'd like to share or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products that you hear advertised or recommended on the program, please go to my website's brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and pharmacistben.com. You can purchase longevity products off the website or you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team, if you so desire, for a one-time $25 fee. If you want to start a business, if you're an entrepreneur, if you want to make your own hours, work out of the home, enjoy the tax benefits associated with having your own business. If you're nutritionally minded, if health or, uh, health and nutritional supplementation and all the strategies we talk about here on the Bright Side have changed your life and you want to make money helping change others' lives at the, this very fundamental level, the level of health. You want to join, you at least want to look into the longevity business, please check out our website, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com for more information. You can also call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. Also want to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com or Transdermal C Serum, Transdermal C Balm. Retinol 5% gel and omega 6 healing cream, all designed to heal your skin. This is one of the discoveries I made as a compounding pharmacist, a skin health compounding pharmacist. I was a compounding pharmacist for many years, I guess I still am, but I specialized in the skin. I didn't make estrogen creams and I didn't make hormone pills and I didn't I didn't compound internal medication. I was compounding skin care medication, skin health medication. What I discovered was that when you heal the skin, you anti-age the skin, and pretty much everything we want a skin health product to do are, are potions and lotions and creams and wrinkle products, etc., all involve healing the skin. If you can heal the skin using nutrients, you will be anti-aging the skin and moisturizing the skin, and that's how I came up with my True Skin Health products. They're all designed to heal the skin. They're based on formulations that I came up with as a compounding pharmacy pharmacist in my compounding pharmacy, uh, which I had for many, many years. And this is the culmination of everything I've learned. True skin health products are the culmination of everything I learned in 30 years of compounding skin health products for the skin. And you can benefit from them as well. Check them all out at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side. On our last program, we were talking about the little things, the simple things that we can do to restore and to maintain our health. Calorie restriction, intermittent fasting, eating less food, breathing with awareness, meditation, relaxation, exercise, rest, 
and of course, nutritional supplementation. These are the non-medical strategies that are behind good health. And this idea of simplification is super, super important, especially if we're not feeling as well as we should. We are immersed in this idea that it equates health with medicine, that makes doctors into health gurus. Doctors are not health gurus. To doctor something is not a compliment. If you go to court and you tell them you're doctoring your ta- you doctored the evidence, that's not a good thing. If you go to the IRS and say, here's my taxes, they're doctored, that's not a good thing. Because to doctor something is to jury rig it. It's to commit a fraud. It's to pretend it is something that it is not. In the case of doctoring our bodies, we pretend that we're healthy because we've lowered our cholesterol scores. We pretend that our thyroid works better because our TSHs went up instead of down. We use statistics and we use diagnostics and we use markers as a substitute for good health. We're told that it's about our test scores. It's about our numbers. And the abysmal state of the health of Americans in the light of more doctoring than any other culture has had in the history of mankind is all the evidence we need to see to expose the fallacy of this idea of medicating to ourselves back to health. And make no mistake about it, that's what the Affordable Health Care Act is about. It's not about anybody's health. The government does not have an interest in maintaining Americans' health. The government has an interest in maintaining our economic health, our financial health, and not necessarily ours, but the financial health of the corporatocracy, not the financial health of the individual. As always, it is the institution versus the individual, and the Affordable Health Care Care Act and our medical model is a classic example of the self-serving nature of, of government regulations and mandates that benefit institutions and corporations while individuals get sicker and sicker. And supplementation is one of the most powerful strategies we have to defeat this fallacy, this evil fallacy. When it comes to supplementation, you have two kinds of supplements. Both are valuable. Some of these supplements are said to be essential. Others are said to be non-essential. There's the 90 essential nutrients. We talk about them all the time as the mighty 90 essential nutrients. They're incredibly important. They're not really found in a lot of foods. And when they're in foods, we tend to cook them out or process them out. And this is why a good supplement program is so darn important. An essential nutrient is one that by definition will cause a disease if it's absent. It's like air. Air is essential. Perhaps not a nutrient, but air is essential. Without air, you die. Essential nutrients are likewise essential. Without them, you die. The thing that's so important and so tricky to understand about essential nutrients is their essentiality and the relationship these these, uh, essential nutrients have to diseases is on a continuum, which you can think of as a scale that runs from zero to 100. In other words, if you don't have enough, say, vitamin C, You may not have full-blown scurvy. Scurvy is a deadly disease that's marked by deteriorating of our connective tissue and ultimately will kill us. It's a horrible, horrible disease. But if you're just missing a little vitamin C, you may not have full-blown scurvy, but you may have thinning bones. You may have osteoporosis. You may have weaker blood vessels that predispose you to plaques and cholesterol and perhaps even heart disease. But you may not have full-blown scurvy. But you may just have a little tiny bit of the manifestation of vitamin C deficiency, and nobody's going to think that this is a subclinical version of a deficiency disease. Osteoporosis could very well be the manifestation of a slight deficiency in vitamin C. Likewise, if you're getting a little but not enough vitamin B1, you may not have the full-blown deficiency disease caused by no vitamin B1, zero vitamin B1. That's called beriberi, which is uh, Swahili for I can't, I can't. Beriberi, I can't, I can't. Vitamin B1 deficiency disease is when you just can't do anything. You can't move, and ultimately you die. Well, you may not have full-blown beriberi, you may not have full-blown vitamin B1 deficiency, but you may have a mild vitamin B1 deficiency, and you just might be tired all the time. You just might have chronic fatigue, and nobody's going to think that this is a manifestation of a deficiency disease, subclinical as it may be. Subclinical meaning that you don't have to go to the hospital. You just feel tired all the time. This idea of the subclinical aspect of deficiency diseases is so important, and this is where people get benefits by getting on the Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients. All right, we've got to take a break. We'll finish up when we come back. 844-236-6010 is our number. I am Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We will return right after this. back on the break. 
right side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got lines open for you at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, questions about the longevity products, formulations, ingredients, skin health questions, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side, 844-236-6010. And we'll get your calls in our next segment, as we always do. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, please head to my websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. Tell them you want to join the team for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business or earn thank you checks associated with having your own having your own business and helping spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. You can earn your uh, you can uh, make money out of the home out of your home. You don't have to go into work. You don't have to punch a time clock. There's so many benefits to having your own business. It's not easy. I'm not saying it's easy being an entrepreneur. It is a it's a warrior ship to be an entrepreneur, and certainly the lifestyle is not for everybody, but if it is for you or if it sounds intriguing, please call the phone team at 866-735-2470 for more information or head to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Okay, so when it comes to supplementation, we want to get this idea that there are uh, there are condition, there are uh, subclinical versions of deficiency disease states. You may not be full-blown deficient. You may not have full-blown scurvy or full-blown beriberi, but you may have subclinical beneath the level of the clinic. Subclinical means it's not bad enough for you to go to the doctor or the hospital or to take steps, but you just may feel like crappy. You may feel tired. You may have uh, um, osteoporosis or weak bones, or you just may not be feeling 100% up to snuff. It could very well be that you are subclinically deficient, and this is why nutritional supplementation helps everybody. Even if you think you're healthy, but you're not maximally healthy, you could be leaving health on the table, leaving good health on the table by not getting on a supplement program. If you're missing B1, uh, slightly missing, missing B1, you may just be tired all the time. If you're slightly missing vitamin C, you may just have thinning bones or weak blood vessels. And when you have weak blood vessels, by the way, you'll end up with cholesterol plaques. Cholesterol plaques are the manifestation of weak blood vessels. Cholesterol does not accidentally just deposit itself in blood vessels. Cholesterol represents the body's protective mechanism. It represents the way the body patches up leaks. It's part of the repair mechanism, and only a boneheaded medical professional could think that shutting down the production of cholesterol is somehow a good thing. If you're missing vitamin A, you may not have full-blown night blindness, but you just may not be able to see as clearly when, uh, it, it, when it's dark. If you have zinc deficiency, it may not be fatal. It may not be bad enough that it'll kill you. It'll, it may not be severe enough that you'll drop dead, but you may just get frequent infections, or you may have a skin condition like acne or eczema. See what I'm saying here? The health challenges caused by essential nutrients occur on a range from mild to severe. And it is only when it becomes severe, when only in the severe disease state, that the medical model will consider using essential nutrients. But because of this idea of the continuum, even mild deficiencies, while they may not put you in the hospital, can still have a negative effect on health and can still be alleviated by a good supplement program, a supplement program that features the essential nutrients, nutrients that are so important that d disease or uh, diseases will occur during deficiency states. Now, there are also non-essential nutrients. These are nutrients that the body can make that you really will not experience a big time deficiency in because the body will be making them. Excuse me for that. Um, because the body can be making them, but they're still important. Alpha lipoic acid, probiotics, digestive enzymes, conditionally essential or non-essential amino acids like arginine, tyrosine, glycine, glutamine. These are non-essential. Your body can make them, but they are still very important. And so is the one that we've been talking about now for a couple of weeks, cysteine, or as it's available as in a supplemental form, NAC, N-acetylcysteine, which I have to tell you is my favorite non-essential nutrient. I've seen so many ways that the body benefits personally in my life and in my patients' lives when people supplement with NAC. NAC is basically an amino acid. It's not classified as essential. The body can make it. But it is said to be conditionally essential, meaning 
like glutamine, by the way, which is another very important conditionally essential amino acid. It's not essential because the body can make it, but it's conditionally essential because we can always use more of it. The secret to the power of cysteine or NAC, N-acetylcysteine, I'm going to use those terms interchangeably. They're basically the same thing. NAC has a little, a little tweak to it that makes it more absorbable, but in the body, they're basically the same thing. The secret to this molecule is the element sulfur. There's only two amino acids that are very similar that have this element sulfur. One's called methionine, the other, other is called cysteine, and they're very, very similar. They're related to each other. Sulfur acts like an electrical battery. It's like a magnet. It has a, a powerful electrical nature. And this allows it to do lots of different things in the body, and the secret to cysteine is in the sulfur atom. Sulfur acts like a little, batter, uh, a, a little electrical battery that magnetically pulls toxins out of the body. This is why NAC is used in emergency rooms for acute liver poisoning. That little sulfur atom pulls toxins out of the body, including Tylenol, which is NAC's most uh, well-known use in the medical field, in the medical, uh, medical world, as, as emergency, uh, emergency room medicine for treating uh, Tylenol poisoning. NAC is produced in the body, as I say, from... Uh, another amino acid, which is methionine. Methionine is essential. Methionine has to be eaten. And this is another kind of interesting issue in the world of health, the essentiality of methionine. Methionine is found in high-protein foods, especially meat. And most of us will get enough methionine. If you're, if you're using the standard American diet, you're probably getting plenty of methionine. So supplementing with methionine is not necessarily something that you need to do. On the other hand, if you're a vegetarian or you're a vegan, you may not be getting enough methionine because the most important sources of methionine are animal products. And the only way a vegetarian or, or a vegan is going to really get good amounts of methionine is by eating lots of legumes, which are the vegetarians go to source for a high protein foods. Now legumes have their own problems. Strictly speaking from a, from a health, uh, health standpoint, the vegetarian sources of protein are more problematic than many of the animal sources of protein, particularly meat. Now I'm not saying meat is necessarily a good food because of how we cook it. And certainly what we give our livestock is not a good thing, but just theoretically speaking, if you were going to eat meat that you hunted, wild game, and you want to compare the health value of that kind of meat, wild game, uh, animals that have been subsisting on grasses and such, and you want to compare the health value of meats to beans, you'd have a hard time arguing that beans or legumes are a better food source. Although they are high protein, and if you're a vegetarian or vegan, you're pretty much stuck with eating a lot of beans. On the other hand, some vegetarians are not even getting enough, they're not even dealing with protein, even if they do eat a little bit of beans, a little bit of legumes. And this can create a problem with sulfur. If you're a vegetarian or a vegan and you're not getting high protein foods, you're not getting enough high protein foods, you may very well end up with a sulfur deficiency. And there are some researchers who believe that this sulfur deficiency is very common and very problematic, including a guy named Dr. Kilmer McCulley, who we've had on this program before. Kilmer McCulley was a Harvard professor who debunked the cholesterol theory, the stupidest idea in all of medicine, the cholesterol theory of heart disease, that too much cholesterol causes heart disease. Kilmer McCulley debunked that theory. He ended up getting fired from his job for having the nerve to say, no, it's not cholesterol, but I think it might have something to do with sulfur. All right, we'll continue. We come back from our break and take your phone calls as well. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. you become more so okay, we are back on the bright side. Got lines open at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products or the longevity business or health challenges you or a loved one may be dealing with. If you have a comment or success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got a couple lines open for you. And if you're on hold, uh, we'll get to you in just a moment. A couple interesting stories. First one from the Journal of Antimicrobial Chemotherapy. A new study links antibiotic resistance to common household disinfectant triclosan. Triclosan is found in most cleansers and and sprays that purport to be antibacterial. Scientists from the University of Birmingham have discovered a link between antibiotic resistance and resistance to the disinfectant triclosan. In other words, bacteria become resistant to antibiotics the more triclosan you use. You don't need any antibacterials for your hand. Bacteria comes right back. Use soap. 
Use alpha hydroxy acids. Use apple cider vinegar. Use lemon juice. All of those are antibacterial without causing anti without causing uh, bacterial uh, antibiotic resistance. And by the way, you have a microbiome on your skin that is just as important to health as the microbiome in your intestine. And we kill off those good bacteria that live on our skin at our own peril the same way that we kill off the uh, bacteria in our intestine at our own peril. Don't use triclosan. You don't need it. If you want to get rid of bacteria on the skin, on your hands, use plain old soap and water. It won't cause bacterial resistance and it'll kill bacteria just fine. From the journal Nutrition, vegetarianism produces subclinical malnutrition, hyperhomocysteinemia, and atherogenesis, basically heart disease. We're going to talk about homocysteine here tomorrow or the next day, perhaps. Homocysteine is related to heart disease. Cholesterol is not, at least cholesterol production, I should say, is not. There, yes, there's cholesterol in the arteries when you have heart disease, but it's not the excessive production of cholesterol that's the problem as much as it is the uh, defective uh, circulation or circul circulatory vessels. Homocysteine, on the other hand, is a problem. Homocysteine can be lowered very easily using nutritional supplements, just a penny or two pennies worth of nutritional supplements a day. As I say, we'll talk about that tomorrow. According to uh, research from uh, this is Journal Nutrition, the low dietary intake of protein and sulfur amino acids, like NAC, which we've been talking about, by a plant-eating population leads to subclinical protein malnutrition, explaining the origin of too much homocysteine and increased vulnerability of these vegetarian subjects to cardiovascular disease. Yes, I think vegetarianism is great from a philosophical standpoint, but from a practical standpoint, you've got to be very careful to make sure you're getting enough sulfur, very careful to make sure that you're getting enough protein, very careful that you're not eating too much sugar and carbohydrates, which do come from, uh, which you will get from eating a lot of veggies. There are actually some physicians, some excessively boneheaded ones, who will tell you that carbohydrates are not the cause of diabetes, literally. I was listening to, watching a video yesterday uh, where there were these uh, just numbskull physicians who said diabetes is not caused by too much carbohydrate. Diabetes is caused by too much fat. Now, too much fat is definitely not a good thing. Fat is pro-inflammatory. Body fat can be a problem. Processed fats, cooked fats, definitely a problem. But to, uh, to uh, absolve carbohydrates as a cause of heart disease and as a cause of diabetes and a, as a cause of weight gain is just stupid. And there are, believe it or not, physicians who are doing that. I was listening to them talk yesterday. I forgot the name of the video. I'll have to go look it up. Uh, but in any case, if you are a vegetarian, you can still do it, but you got to make sure you're getting enough sulfur. If you're a vegetarian or a vegan, you should probably be supplementing with NAC, probably be supplementing with MSM, prob probably be using pea protein powder and bean protein powder and or bean protein. A coconut flour or coconut protein can be helpful. Brazil nut protein. There are ways that you can do it. You will be missing out on some of the key building elements that are only found in animal foods. Nonetheless, you can still pull it off if you're a vegan or vegetarian, you just got to pay, pay very close attention to what you're eating. All right, speaking of sugar, this is from, uh, from the University of London, published in the European Respiratory Journal. Sugar intake during pregnancy is associated with allergy and allergic asthma in children. That is, moms who eat lots of sugar have babies, tend to have babies who are going to have higher rates of allergic conditions, specifically allergic asthma. This is why it's so, so important for mothers to be who are making a baby in the womb to pay super close attention to what you are ingesting. Now, certainly sugar is a problem. But so is all processed food. Processed fats can be a problem. It's a problem for everybody, but it's extra important if you're building a baby. If you're building a baby, it becomes super duper important to supplement. In addition to paying attention to what you're eating, making sure you're getting enough protein, you're building a baby after all, making sure you're getting enough B vitamins, your energy vitamins, making sure you're getting enough vitamin C and E, your protection vitamins, making sure you're getting all of the essential nutrients. It's not like there's one or two of the nutrients that you need, although there are one or two that maybe get all the press, but you want to be on a full-blown out nutritional supplement program if you're pregnant and you've got to be do more, you got to do more than those prenatal vitamins although the prenatal vitamins can help you got to do more than those prenatal vitamins especially fats good fats vitamin a vitamin e vitamin d and omega fatty acids okay 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side got lines open for you let's go to minnesota 
and say good morning to Gene. What's up, Gene? How you doing? Hey, thanks for taking my call. I'm sure. calling about my wife who's had long-term medical problems over and over and over and has subjected her body to every chemical I think there is from all oh, wow. the medications. And uh, I got her to agree to go to the doctor and talk to them about getting off of her meds. What, what is uh, she on? Which they kind of didn't like the idea, but they agreed. Well, then what, she, what is she on? What meds is she on? Um, Lisinopril, uh, cholesterol meds, uh, uh, antidepressants, uh, anxiety drugs. Oh, my goodness. You say was, Is she on more than five or six medication? She has been. Okay. Um, they agreed to... to uh, but, but she was having strokes. That's her latest thing. Before that, it was other things, but strokes. So they're saying, well, you got to keep taking these drugs or you're going to ha- keep having strokes. And I'm saying, wait a minute. She's taking these drugs and she's having strokes. <laughs> That's right. And in addition to that, they're pumping her full of... She's constantly getting MRIs and scans and all this the pumping all this stuff in her veins which i don't know what that does but it can't be good since it's being done all the time and so now that she's and being then, treated now that she's being treated so comprehensively by the doctor and and he's a brilliant genius because he's a doctor she feels great right because he's been treating her so she feels awesome she's just bouncing around the room and has all this energy and just feels great right because she's the doctor's yeah. treating her and doctors are so yeah. smart right they know everything she's right so weak so, so weak and so unsure of herself and thinks that these doctors are gods and she needs their help. And she just runs back there over and over and over again. And, like and gets worse and worse. To agree to, to stop the drugs. But she turned around and had her PCA take her to another doctor, uh, unbeknownst to me, and then just passed out a few days ago. And they hauled her up to her bed and stuck her in a bed. And I went there and said, what are you doing? Tell me the truth. And she could hardly talk. Here they had given her three more drugs that I didn't know uh, about. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. It, it, she passed out after taking them for two days. So what would happen? How much worse could she be if she stopped taking the drugs? What would That's happen? That's what I want to get her to a doctor <laughs> so, so somebody else can tell her besides me. Shh. She the needs to be weaned off of those. She needs to be weaned off of those medication. And yeah. of course, she has free will here. By the way, you know, Jean, she is your wife, but she gets to do whatever she wants to do. And we all have free will to make these decisions, even if they kill us, and that's fine. But if she wants to, and I recommend that she does, uh, wean herself off her meds. We can definitely help her. Hang on, we got to take a commercial, and we'll uh, finish up when we come back. Don't go away, Jean. Great. Thank you. All right, I'm pharmacist Ben. Eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. Hi, this is. Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you're interested in purchasing any of the Longevity products, you can call the phone team at 866-735-2470, or you can purchase them right off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the websites as well. We're talking to Gene in Minnesota. Gene, you there, my friend? Gene, Gene, you there, Gene? Do we have Gene? The dancing machine, whatever. Gene, Gene, hey, uh, who was Gene, Gene, the dancing machine? Oh, that was a, that was the Gong Show, wasn't it? That was a uh, long time. Could have been Gene Kelly. I don't know. No, I think it was the Gong Show. There was some okay. Gene, Gene, Gene. Do you remember that show, the Gong Show, back in the seventies? Uh, barely. So, but. Okay, I'm a little older than you, probably. So anyway, Gene, so your wife has got uh, multiple health challenges. You never, you never really said what her health challenges are, but I assume they're cardiovascular in nature, heart disease kind of thing. Is that no, right? No, they can't find anything wrong with their heart, and they keep trying to find something wrong. And I'm telling her, you will have something wrong if you continue this. What's with all the meds? But she started out with MS in 95. Eventually, she was told it's gone away by three different um neurologists and uh, was told that she can quit taking her shot. Well, she had another neurologist was telling her, don't quit taking your shot. Oh, geez. Eventually got her to quit. Um, they said there's no new activity for MS in her brain. But then she started down the stroke uh, path with anemia in between, which they refused to do anything about, but give her an iron pill. But in a book on anemia from the Institute of Anemia out east, I found the answer. The doctors argued. Eventually, they admitted it was right, and that was that serotonin uptake inhibitors 
screw up the serotonin, which controls your digestive tract, which causes bleeding when you have anemia. And finally, they had to, uh, to admit they were wrong. They took her off of it, and her anemia went away immediately. Okay, well, you, you've that was exp- in between. Now it's all this strokes and depression. All right, let's, let's start with, you know, here's the thing, Gene, and this is for anybody out there listening who's got multiple health challenges or, or multiple prescription drugs and don't know where to begin. You always begin with the most, simple, the most simple steps, and the most simple step is going to be food. I'm not blaming everything on food, although certainly a case can be made that food is the biggest culprit when it comes to our illnesses, but regardless of whether you think food is the biggest culprit or just a culprit, it always helps to start off by paying attention to food, and it's especially important if you're dealing with a, 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 a ball of yarn, a, a web of entangled health challenges and prescription drugs and, and, and just all of these different factors and you don't know where to begin. Start with food. Now, I'm assuming she really wants to. It doesn't sound like she does, but I'm just going to assume that she does want to. And, I, and I'm also speaking to other listeners who are dealing with multiple health challenges or who know somebody who has multiple health challenges that they love or care about. You start off with food, and, and the way you do this is by doing a fast for two or three days. I know I say this all the time, but repetition is reinforcement, and I hope if I just get through to one more person on this program, it's worth the repetition. Uh, start off with food. Start off with fasting. Uh, if you absolutely can't fast, some people will feel like they can't fast, do a Swero V cleanse where you do half a bottle of Swero V every hour for two or three days. Uh, that will give you energy in the middle of the day. It's got electrolytes. It's got whey prote- uh, uh, fermented whey protein in there. It's very tasty, very easy, very inexpensive. And you can do a Swero V cleanse for two or three days or fast. Fasting's probably a little bit better. Also, when you fast, you don't necessarily have to worry about skipping your supplements for two or three days. It's not going to hurt you to skip your supplements for a couple of days. If you do your supplements, it's not going to affect your fast if you decide to do them. So you fast for two or three days. Then when you start eating again, you uh, eat one food at a time. Just have bread. Just have cheese. Just have eggs. Just have chicken. Just one type of food. Start with your favorite food and eat it all day long and see how you feel. What you'll notice is your favorite foods are going to talk to you. They're going to tell you, at least your digestive system after you eat those favorite foods is going to talk to you and tell you, don't eat that food. That usually happens with your favorite food. And then you start on a, on a, uh, on a journey of eliminating certain foods, foods that cause problems. That's called the elimination diet. You write everything down in a book. That's called the food diary. Fasting plus food diary plus elimination diet. Then you're going to start using supplements for the gut. As you rightly pointed out, drugs can really do a number on your GI tract. It's not just serotonin reuptake inhibitors. And by the way, most or a large amount of the serotonin in the body is is in the digestive system. Most of it is in the digestive system. The vast majority of it is in the digestive system. So it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that if you take a serotonin reuptake inhibitor, you're going to impact your digestive, uh, you're going to impact digestive health. So uh, uh, wean yourself off of the problem foods. Focus on the digestive system with supplements like probiotics. The the, uh, nightly essence for longevity is a great probiotic. Apple cider vinegar with your meals. Ultimate enzymes with your meals together with the apple cider vinegar. You might want to try some glutamine powder, which can be very helpful for the digestive system. Um, Using vegetable juices, which do triple duty for protecting the digestive tract. They have fiber in them. They have nitrates or nitrogen in them, which is important for digestive health. And then if you do fermented veggies, that will uh, throw in some bre- some bacteria for supporting the digestive system. Eat as little as possible, calorie restriction, and then move on to stage two, which is the di- uh, which is blood sugar, diabetes, or dysglycemia, more technically, messed up blood sugar. Keeping your intake of fast-burning carbohydrates down, eating more fiber, soluble fiber and, and insoluble fiber, making a fiber drink. One of the greatest diet strategies uh, uh, satiety or satisfaction strategies, blood sugar lowering strategies is to grind up flax seeds and chia seeds in a coffee grinder and then uh, just mix them in with some, the, the ground powder with some water, mix in some turmeric and then some spices. I like cinnamon and clove and ginger. I do this every day. A cinnamon, clove, ginger, and nutmeg, turmeric, chia seeds, and flax seeds in water. I put a little honey in there uh, and it is absolutely 
absolutely delicious. And not only is it great for your digestive system, but the flaxseed and the chia seeds are great sources of protein, and they're great sources of protein, especially for uh, uh, vegetarians and vegans. And it's so filling. If you do 30 grams of flax seeds and another 10 or 15 grams of chia seeds, that's like uh, 30 grams is about two tablespoons, uh, 10 grams is maybe two teaspoons. You don't have to be exact with it. Uh, it is so filling and so satisfying. There's no way you could put ice cream or, your, or, or pie or cake or your f pizza or whatever your favorite snack food is right in front of you. you have, you're going to have no interest in eating it. In addition to the protein and the fiber, you'll also get essential fats and you'll also get fatty vitamins. And the turmeric is awesome for the digestive tract also. It's, uh, turmeric's awesome for everything. Uh, and it's very, very tasty. So that's another strategy you can use. Use your sweet, have her use sweeties, chromium and vanadium, beyond tangy tangerine, sipping on that all day long. Uh, ult the ultimate selenium and the fucoid Z. Make sure she's relaxing the body. You hear, these are all simple little things. That is the theme of the bright side is there are simple little things that we can do to get healthy. Everything I'm telling you here will get her way healthier than anything the doctor has given her. It's a disgrace. It's a disgrace for any physician to claim that they're a healthcare professional and treat, them, treat somebody like they're treating your wife. Did they tell her about deep breathing? Did they tell her about massage? Did they tell her about nutritional supplementation? Did they tell her about fiber? These are all fundamental ways that we can change our health. So don't, don't underestimate the power of deep breathing and relaxation and meditation and massage and also spiritual techniques. Anything that taps into spirituality is going to uh, help improve health as long as it's within a context of all the other things that we're talking about here today. Personally, I would be weaning myself off my medications ASAP as soon as possible. Always make sure you talk to your doctor before you uh, start taking, before you get off your meds though. You always want to involve your physician because after all, he is as misguided as he may be, he is trying to help. All right, Gene, I want to get a couple more calls in. Did I help you out? Yes, you did. It was, Thank I just wanted to ask one quick thing, if I could. Yeah. What do you think of lithium orotate? It's awesome stuff. Awesome. It's not like a miracle or anything, but it's just great for sleep, for relaxation. It can help lower blood pressure. It's just it's a great supplement. Uh, if you're dealing with any dementia. Not to take it. Well, you know, what can I tell you? <laughs> <laughs> Do doctors are what they, they do things. I, look, when I graduated pharmacy school, I was blown away by the stupid things I heard board certified physicians say. I'm no longer surprised by that, nor should anybody be surprised by that. An MD does not confer on you intelligence. Remember the Wizard of Oz? At the end of the, at the, end of the movie, uh, the Wizard of Oz, they were going to give the scarecrow a brain, but they couldn't give him a brain. But he, the wizard said, back where I come from, we can't give you a brain, but we can give you a diploma. Remember that? He said, we, yeah. can't make, we can't make you smart, but we can give you a piece of paper that says that you're a doctor or a graduate or whatever. All right, Is there any that's... way I can get this played back to her? Yeah, yeah. Go to the archives, benfuchsarchives.com, and then also uh, you can get archives at brightsideben.com, and then also uh, she can email me, ben at ksco.com, if she's so interested. Put your phone number on there. All right, we're, that's the music, Gene. We got to go. You. I apologize. Thanks. Thanks for your call. Appreciate it. And... Uh, Sorry we left you on hold if we did. Went a little over with Gene, but that's a lot of good health information. BenFuchsArchives.com and also BrightSideBen.com. We've got everything archived. Thanks so much for listening to The Bright Side, friends. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.